I know a lot of you guys watching this video are feeling incredibly stuck. You have these incredible goals to get top grades in the upcoming exams, but you're just not sure if that's going to be possible. Now, if that's you, I want you to listen very carefully to this video because I'm going to talk you through how to ensure that you do get the top grades that you deserve in the upcoming exams using the clarity method. There are 20 behaviors that I like to put down for any student who is looking to prepare for their upcoming examinations. Hey, Usman's editor here. Just wanted to say it gets really crazy towards the end of the video. And the first thing I would say is really we need to smash that first exam, okay? Because if you smash that first exam, you do really well. So in your first exam of the exam season, then you're getting this loop of goodness. So you do well in your first exam, you get this dopamine boost, and you want to do well in the next exam because you have more energy, you have more kind of desire to do well, and then you do well in that. So it's like this positive cycle that's really beneficial. So it's super important that we have a timetable that we are sticking to well in advance of the exams, right? So I don't want you to start making a new timetable as you get into the exam. I have this very interesting story of a student who was about 10, 11 years old and he was going to do a very important exam here in England, which is the 11 plus exam. And that week before he started, he was going to sit the exam. His parent decided like he's gonna to walk to school by himself. And that week, the week of the examination, so his schedule had changed. And what had happened is that someone tried to kidnap this kid and this kid was very thrown off it. And really his exam didn't go to. Now, this idea of changing schedule is not a good idea because you don't know what the consequences are yet. Dress up in your school uniform the night before. I had a friend uh, who used to dress up in what we what are called the subfusks in Oxford. These are uniforms that you have to wear when you go into the exam. It's the only university pretty much in the UK where you have to wear a uniform before you go into the exams. And he used to do that before his exams. And I found that quite interesting because he felt that he wanted to be in that same mode of if he's gonna sit the exam in his uniform while he's practicing here whilst in his bedroom, he's gonna practice in his uniform. So that was very interesting. On related note, you could put your makeup on or whatever else it makes you feel good for the exam, do that. You know how I got these scars? Exercise regularly. Take some time out to exercise. Maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's five minutes. Obviously, don't spend two hours going to the gym and back and forth. That's probably not going to be super beneficial to you. We'll see if you can do something in and around your home. Meditate and pray. Now, if you're inclined to religion, so for example, if you're a Muslim, you may automatically already be waking up for your morning prayer, Fajr prayer. A lot of successful people still yearn to this idea of meditation because what this is allowing you to do is again stepping away from the hustle and bustle of that paper and just relaxing okay and moving away just having this moment of quiet and really thinking about it's not that deep and that's really that's super super useful yeah if you can think that during the the myths and the chaos of the exams that it's not that deep then you will really avoid this panic station. Cold showers. Take a cold shower early on in the day or maybe through in the middle of the day. Cold showers, there have been lots of studies behind this that they really do help you reset your system and really focus in on the task that's needed. Day naps. Now, this is very common in hot countries. So if you're doing examinations during a hot period, you might just do this anyway. But if not, this is a really good way of recharging your battery. Okay, sleep plays a very important part in consolidating our memory and helping us recharge and go for it for the next day. Taking breaks. This is super, super important. So one part of the preparation outside of the exam is being aware of our good friend, the neuro preferring, okay, in the playground. Now, when you take a break from say your studies and you go onto your phone, that's not actually taking a break because you're still using neuro periphery, okay? So your brain is really using up this kind of ability to hone down on something on useless matters. It doesn't really care whether you're using it on Instagram or TikTok or on your papers. So you have this limited amount of, I guess this superpower in the playground of your brain and you're really wasting it on your phone. So really understand that you need to give your brain a break. Do not use up all of your superpower whilst you're taking a break. 
go to the toilet well in advance. Last thing you want is your stomach making weird noises and you know, you're feeling embarrassed or worse still, actually wanting to go and therefore diverting your attention from the laser focus of the paper to your digestive system. Next point, have a healthy but not heavy breakfast or lunch. If your exams in the morning, have a light breakfast so you've got something in your stomach but not too much so your digestive system should not be the one that's taking majority of your body's resources. The majority of the resources need to be going here. Jog into your exams. So I used to do this when I used to go into my college exams and sometimes my university exams. I used to jog in towards the exam. So I would come off the bus for example or I've come off my bicycle and I would jog into the example. And what that would do is it would get the blood pumping to my brain and it would just give me this kind of positive effect. Run, Forrest, run! What I didn't realize at the time that there's actually scientific research behind this kind of stuff. There's some kind of not directly associated, but there's some links with something called EMDR, which is about how stress can be relieved uh, with certain situations if you know you have movement and understanding in terms of your eyes yeah so what running does is it improves the optic flow which is like the visual context you know the vis visual stream of information that's coming in and it allows you to be more aware of your surroundings so you're not just caught up in your internal thoughts you're being aware of your surroundings doing power poses before your exam now what great speakers and great actors and authors and these guys what they do is that they would go and make i don't know like muscles and something like that right some powerful pose which would give their body a signal that they, you know, a psychological signal to do well. It's all about reading your mind so your body can execute on what the mind f feels. Before your exam, say 10 minutes or five minutes before your exam, have a chocolate or even coffee. If you're used to it in the right amount of doses, then, you know, chocolate and coffee can be great stimulants for your brain. Be aware of what is allowed in the exam and what's not. So for example, if, you have, if you're on medication, like EpiPens, inhalers, etc., these are generally allowed. You may need a letter from your school, depending on what exact requirement you want to take into the exam, okay? And of course, certain things like good luck charms and all of this type of stuff are generally not allowed. Start from the back. I used to love starting papers from the back because generally speaking, the harder questions are at the back. Why would you not start and give it your best shot when you are freshest, when your mind is at its optimum capacity and your concentration is at its max level, why would you not attempt the hardest question then? A lot of students make the mistake of going through the paper in a linear order. In general, for most papers, you don't need to do that. And I've seen this with official exam board material where they talk about the fact that the harder questions are towards the back. So this is not something that you think that they are at the end, they actually are at the end. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Okay, one of the best tips I can give you is treat the examiner like an idiot. So when you're doing a paper, always spell every single thing out. What I mean by that is do not assume that the examiner understands anything. Assume that the examiner is an idiot. Okay, what that means is that you will be writing down every single step and that will really help you see your own thought process and avoid, you know, mistakes. Be aware really how they make questions difficult. So there's really three axes that you need to think about. So you've got the actual difficulty of the question topic, right? So it could be easy, medium, hard. You've got the clues that they give you. So that's another axis. And then finally, you've got this axis of context where basically the easiest bit is they don't really require context. It's just fact recall. Then the next one is a bit more of a context and then the third one is like in a completely unfamiliar context, right? You're like, whoa, like what is this situation going on here? So that's like the three ways that can really make the question hard. So how do we best prepare for this? The way you best prepare for it is you really want to understand the core principle and then be comfortable in applying it A, without any clues and hints and tips and B, in unfamiliar contexts. Really be aware that they can try to make a question harder by doing this. There's really no other way they can make a question hard. One thing to think about in terms of really getting our focus and our behavior is getting in this, what's known as the state of flow. What we want is we want visual focus. So we know from studies that our eyesight and vision really leads to our focus, right? It really helps us to focus on things. So 
what I really want you to understand is that you know when, when we're trying to focus on something it's we want to try to bring our attention to the focal point but if we want to de-stress we want to look at it more panoramically a panoramic point of view is when you're kind of taking into account all of the surrounding and also interestingly this this is a phenomenon where you might even find that you feel that time is slowing down all right then this idea of time slowing down because you're more aware of the time and this is how you get more time in the exam right you'll feel like you'll have more time to answer the questions it also allows you allow you to pause in the exam we've talked about all of this stuff but what if the brown stuff hits the fast oscillating wind turbine in the exam you're like you open the paper and you're like oh crap okay <laughs> what do we do i don't know there are many different breathing techniques that you may come across one of the most well researched and well backed up is two breaths in and one out okay so two inhales so and then one exhale so like that yeah this is known as the physiological sigh in literature and this has shown to reduce stress levels and really help you and kung fu martial arts mma all of these guys they know that breathing plays such an important role in a competitive environment and hence why these masters work on this day and night so we can bring this into our exam if you ever find yourself panicking i want you to remember this it's the physiological side making silly mistakes silly mistakes are a big part of especially scientific mathematics based papers and tests and one of the ways we can avoid it is coming to another scientific aspect made famous by an author called daniel kahneman which is a slow and fast thinking basically the idea goes like this that you have two types of systems in your brain the slow thinking brain and the fast thinking brain system one is the fast thinking brain which does things automatically does things which are on repetition and for example turning the handle of a door you don't really think about that or watching this video right now you might be swiveling on your chair you might be on your bed have your thumb on the phone or whatever right and you don't even realize that you're just doing it that's system one thinking and system two thinking is the more novel is the more slow approach of doing things now to avoid silly mistakes what we need to understand is that so in terms of system one like the way our body is designed the reason it has system one is because imagine you had to think about every single action that you were doing walking sitting eating if you had to really think about it that would use a lot of brain power so the way it's designed is to be super efficient right but the problem with system one is that it makes a lot of mistakes how do we avoid silly mistake in the exam so really pause and reflect so give yourself a break so your system two can really recharge and go at it again another way is to visualize the question so even if it's a super easy looking question you could potentially make a silly mistake on it visualize it so your brain is having to think in a more novel way and that would mean that your system two is engaged which is the slower thinking brain right don't cheat don't be a coward a is not really going to lead to long-term benefits b is only going to cause stress i've personally known people who have cheated and it doesn't really work out well for them in the long run play the long game if you're not going to do well so what turn down for what and that kind of brings me to the, my last point yeah look a little stress in life isn't the end of the world whether that little stress is just your initial kind of the sewer that you're having to swim through this kind of rubbish this dirty water to get through to the, the clear and the clean water if that's the initial stress just know that on the other side there is victory awaiting you these things are very rarely a matter of life and death yeah so understand that and understand this paradox yeah and i'm going to leave you on this paradox that i find really interesting which is that top sports people top actors famous people right what they do is when they are training when they're doing their practice papers and when they're learning their content they are super critical of themselves but when it comes to the exam or it comes to the pitch it comes to their performance the the concert or whatever it is they are super super proud of their abilities they are super confident in their abilities and that's this paradox shift between 
acting like you're the worst person in terms of this learning the subject ever moving to I'm the best having this attitude really helps even if you haven't done that much preparation in the exam there should be no doubting your own ability and that is the clarity roadmap on how to avoid stress consider subscribing and adios amigos